You guys loved our last video using a high-speed camera to investigate the real-world performance impact of upgrading to a high refresh rate gaming monitor. But you also had some feedback on both our testing methodology and our gaming skills. So for round two, we reached out to NVIDIA for the sponsorship we needed to take our test to the next level. Thanks to them, we are on location in the Santa Ana Esports Arena. We've got a much wider variety of tests and systems, and we were able to get some very special guests to come and participate. Representing the Filthy Casuals, we've got yours truly and Paul from Paul's Hardware, and we are gonna get truly embarrassed today because in the Pro Gamer tier, we've got Corey here from the Washington Justice Esports team. I have kind of a general idea of what I'm doing today. Then we've got a couple of outstanding Twitch streamers, Mr. Grimms. Going from 144 to 240 kind of felt like a slight upgrade for me. And as so very many of you requested, the one and only Shroud. Going from 60 to 144 is like night and day for me, obviously, right? But 144 to 240. So let's get down to business, shall we? So to measure the impact of monitor refresh rate and FPS in game on our subjects, we've built a suite of five tests going from synthetic reaction time tests to aiming tests to putting the whole thing together. So behind me, I have three identical systems except that they've got one key trait modified. So they're all running Core i9-9900K processors. They're all running the same Acer Predator 240 Hertz displays, but their graphics cards have been altered. System number one is running an RTX 2060 Super, which is capable of running our test games today at anywhere from around 250 to 300 frames per second. And its monitor has been completely uncapped to 240 Hertz. This is our best case scenario for competitive gamers, or so we think. We'll see how the results go today. System number two is at the other end of the spectrum. So our monitor refresh rate has been turned all the way down to 60 Hertz, but we went even further than that because having a very high performance graphics card on a 60 Hertz display still does actually give you better responsiveness than if you had a lower performance graphics card. So we have dropped our GPU all the way down to a GTX 750. This is gonna give us anywhere from 70 to 85 FPS in our games. And finally, by popular request, representing the middle ground, we've got our third monitor dialed into 144 Hertz and hooked up to a GTX 1650 that is going to push anywhere from around 150 to 185, 200 FPS. Now, just like last time, our test subjects are gonna have no idea what hardware they're sitting down in front of until they actually start to game and we're gonna be using high-speed cameras to record not just their test scores, that we could get out of the software, but also the exact points they're aiming at and even how they aim. So pulling that duty, we've got a couple of prototype cameras from our homeboys Kronos that are capable of 1080p capture at 1000 FPS for 10 seconds at a time each, giving us a total of 20 seconds of 1000 FPS capture. Now, because that's not long enough for some of our tests pulling, Backup duty today is our RED FXW 8K camera that is going to be running at 1080p, 240 FPS. Hey, how's it going, dude? <laughs> it's good. Do yeah. You, do you want yeah. to know what you're doing? Today? Yeah. Okay. So we set it up so that while we are running in-engine tests, in-game tests, rather than just like a web browser-based yeah. skills trainer, mm -hmm. the tests are really designed to test your skills as opposed to test your ability at a game. We actually had some special development done for this video in the YPRAC Aim Trainer so that we could get exactly the data that we were after. Okay, and what is YPRAC? It's a workshop map by Jesper that's basically like a combination of a whole bunch of different skills training things that you can do. Testing your reaction time, testing your flick shot aiming capabilities, uh, your, your flow kill rates as you have enemies popping up in a shooting gallery, all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, so we got a lot of tests. We've got five different tests, and we're gonna run them until we start to see statistical convergence and we can be confident in our results per gamer. So you'll be trying at three different frame rates, 60 FPS, 240 FPS, and 144 FPS to determine where is that point of diminishing returns or does FPS make a difference at all? Are great gamers just great gamers? 
is it FPS difference or, and hertz, or is it just FPS, you know what I'm saying? What a wonderful question. I am so glad to be working with people who get it today. <laughs> this is awesome. So that matters because if you're running a 60 hertz display, but your graphics card is pumping out 300 frames per second in CSGO and your frame rate capped, you are effectively getting much newer information on screen than you would be if your graphics card was only outputting, let's say, 70, 75 frames per second. So I was actually really late to the 120 hertz uh, monitor change. So when I played Counter-Strike, I played on 60 hertz. And all the top players, I, I had no money at the time because I was really young, and all the top players had 120 hertz. They were on that new new, right? And I was sitting there and I was on 60 and I was still doing great. I swapped to 120. Yeah. Honestly, it didn't really change that much. So I do really think that if somebody played on a 60 hertz long enough, they would play just the same as playing as 144 long enough. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of that today. Uh, so I'm Corey Nigra. I go by Corey inside of game and I'm a damage dealer for the Washington Justice in Overwatch. Uh, I didn't really start using like 144 or 240 until I started playing Overwatch. Interesting. So that was quite recent for you then. Mm. You're a late converter. Mm -hmm. How much of an improvement are you expecting to see going from 60 frames per second to 144 and then from 144 to 240? 60 to 144 is like a huge jump, like 70%. Like you feel the difference. Yeah. You immediately see it. Yeah. Uh, you really have to be looking at 144 to 240 yeah. to really notice it. But I'd say there's definitely a jump, like a smaller jump to the other, maybe like 20%. Okay. Started on Twitch about like four plus years ago. I got really into, uh, I actually started with fighting games, believe it or not. Got into shooters about like a year later and then I just kind of basically just rode the wave of like all the FPS, uh, you know, evolution from like H1Z1 to like PUBG and all the games that you know today. Uh, I understand I'm supposed to be representing a certain class of gamer. Uh, you told me it was probably the best, the best of the best. The technology enthusiast class of gamer. Some, someone, someone who builds more gaming computers than actually plays video games? Yes. We've got five different tests, and we're going to run them until we start to see statistical convergence and we can be confident in our results per gamer. Test number one today is pure reaction time. Shroud clicks in order to indicate that he's ready for the test to begin, and as soon as it turns green, he clicks again as quickly as he can. This tells us his raw reflexes. Do you want a Red Bull? What about coffee? Yeah. Have coffee, but so just have a little bit of coffee before sips you it at every stage? Yeah, if you sip it at every stage, then yeah. So this is a great discussion. Mike was hankering for a coffee, and uh, we actually turned him down because we shot the tests out of order, and we've already done one without caffeine in his system. So now we're just going to have to see just that's this is it. I'm your, your biological steady state. I'm slow. I'm sorry, I'm slow. Yeah, I just don't, I don't think for this test specifically, I don't think 60, 240, 144, I don't think it's gonna make a difference. Cause you're, I mean, you're the only time you feel 60 versus 240 is when you're moving around like so, and you can feel like the tear and everything. And it's just something that you're not used to, but when you're standing still, it's all the same. So I don't think I'm gonna notice the difference. In my mind, I know that it does not feel good, right? Cause I'm on 60 right. and I'm like, oh, this feels terrible, but I actually haven't done legitimate like stats and break it down and like maybe I did get less kills. No, I haven't. Wow. So one of the things our audience asked us to figure out is whether you are in fact human. And with that kind of consistency, yes. I can't say that I'm sure. That's really good. Is it? Yeah. I mean, so consistent. Back in my glory days, maybe 1.5 consistent. 1.72. Now, some of our tests are purely synthetic, and a couple of them are really focused on your reaction time. Now, everyone knows that gamers are basically over the hill by the time they turn 30. Mm. Are you expecting your youth to be an advantage in those kinds of tests versus someone like me? I'm 33. Uh, I'd say yeah, a little bit. Wow, but... what a dick. You know what, this interview's <laughs> over. I mean, it helps a little bit. I'd say a lot of it comes down to practice in the game, because right. being used to be able to see like certain things, like I was watching Shroud do the, the off in the middle of the double doors, and if you're not familiar with doing that every single day, then uh, it would kind of make a little bit of a difference. Sure. Test number two is still a reaction time test, but this time it's a practical one. The classic double doors sniper position on Dust2. So once you shoot to start, at random intervals, 
a counter-terrorist player is going to run across the door and jump across. Now, these are bots, so it will be in exactly the same location every time. So right there on the second line on the truck there is about where he's going to cross. Okay. So this isn't about aiming. This no. is about just keeping it steady, clicking when I can. Correct. Okay. How, how am I missing right now? This is, are we on 64 tick? I'm telling you, I hit this guy at least three times. Okay, that was a whiff, but <laughs> this is bad, I guess. This is a hard man. I'll get him eventually. Oh boy, I got nothing. Zero. How is that even possible? Like, I, it looks to me like he's hitting it. Just so you guys know, we double checked the server tick. It's 128, that's not the issue. It's not good. I'm sorry, Linus. Well, don't apologize to me. Apologize to the millions of viewers. <laughs> uh oh, okay. Can you explain to both of us the science behind why those shots looked like they were hitting, but did not register? Yeah, so at 60 frames and hertz, you're kind of getting delay in two areas. You're getting delay from the game state to what's actually being shown on screen. Mm -hmm. So the guy's actually in a little bit different spot because the rendering took long enough to reach your monitor. Additionally, your input is also delayed. So when you click, it, that is going to take a little bit longer time to actually reach the game state. So you're getting, you're getting kind of latency in both directions. So check like this out. That's oh. pretty cool. All right, is there a different mic? I don't know. I got confused <laughs> for a second. <laughs> and you can see we have multiple frames of our thousand frame per second camera that correspond to a single frame on the monitor because it's only refreshing 60 times a second, right? So I got to scroll through pretty quick here. So that was a clear miss. Yeah. But. This one up here, how uh, how tippy toes can you get? Because we can't really adjust this right now. I'm good. Okay. So this one right here, there's your crosshair. That one's more arguable. You kind of hit him in the tush. Mm -hmm. So that tiny difference could be exactly what was just explained to us then. Maybe. Interesting, hey? I hope so, because I'm making me look real bad. So I'm going to tell you something. You okay. absolutely smoked Shroud and Corey in that test at 60 hertz. Do you think you could train up at 60 and hit as many targets as you did at a higher refresh? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, I can. Okay. Because honestly, like when I was kind of like going through the test and I was kind of feeling like, you know, that slight delay, it's almost like a pattern, right? You, you don't want to press it too fast. Otherwise, you're just going to come up short. So like I mentioned before, like I came from fighting games, right? We had like a big uh, delay between like Xbox and PlayStation, uh, especially when it comes down to like three frame inputs and stuff like that. For this one, it's a little similar. Uh, if you press it too soon, even though you feel like you're confident that you're gonna hit it right on the target, you're gonna hit it way before. So you have to like kind of enter in your head that it's, it's like a slight pattern. Cause this one, you have to like master a delay. With the higher refresh rate, you just have to master more of a reaction time, I would say. Right. Like it, it, it's more on, towards that aspect. High refresh rate doesn't make you a better gamer, but it makes it easier to be a better gamer. I would say so, yeah. Uh, I am older now. I'm a dad. <laughs> Not that that affects your reaction time. It should improve you good, your reaction time. Did you time. get a good night's sleep last night? You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I only got up twice to change diapers. If it makes you feel any better, Shroud only hit two out of 30 on this. Really? Same. Yeah. And same for Corey, the legitimate actual professional gamer. Oh, so the reason so you're saying that I should also be a legitimate professional gamer. No, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, Grimm's hit four out of ten. Wow, consistently. He does have a reputation for being pretty quick. So you had mentioned something really interesting to me. You said that because we're running at such a low frame rate, you can't really trust your eyes, and you're just going off muscle memory. Mm, pretty much. Interesting. I can't track either. It's too hard. Test number three, we change things up again. Your reaction time still matters a lot because you've only got 0.45 seconds to hit each target. At least this is your game. How are you feeling about this one? You got one minute to hit as many red dots as you can. Yeah, I mean, I feel pretty good. So you just put up a 13 yeah. in this one. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I mean, I'm missing like half of them, so like. I'm missing half of them. True. <laughs> Listen to this guy. Missing half of them. So is that just pure muscle memory? You've got your own mouse today. You just yeah. I mean, so you can go. Yeah, I think I'll own on that one probably. Hopefully. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> this, guy. this guy. He will. He def. He definitely will. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, but he's like a cocky mother. So I don't want to root for him. <laughs> it's my know? game. I play this game professionally. I have to. This is a hard test. Yeah. Even point four. Even point five seconds would make a big difference, because I could tell there were yeah. ones where you... It was, it was so close. Ugh. 
Next up is test number four. So you need great reaction time so you can spot the bots popping up in our shooting gallery, and you need to make your flick shots because they're not gonna stand still for long. We're looking for your best time to make 15 kills. This makes me look like I don't know how to play the game. I swear it's the settings. In the flow test, can you name a name for someone that you think would just destroy that? I would say, I probably can name every, every Counter-Strike professional, you know, they're all so good, but if I was to name anybody, I would name like somebody from Team Liquid, so maybe like yeah. Stewie. Your raw reaction time improvement going from 60 to 240 was the cleanest out of anyone we tested today. It was very noticeable to me, and it was very consistent. On the 60 hertz, I was about 210, immediately dropped down to around 180, and I even, I think I hit 142 or 146 at best, which apparently makes me as good or better than Shroud. I've been told. I'm not sure if. How wow. Many did you get? Eight of ten. And how many did you get on sixty? Two out of hundred and ten, I think. If like I feel like I'm doing the exact same same thing. I'm watching for him to just appear in the doorway, and I'm clicking. But incredible difference in in how effective I was at this test. On this test, I got nine out of ten in comparison to the last test where I could barely you got get two one. out of thirty. I could. How? <laughs> Sorry. Does it make a difference? I guess the answer is, yeah. Well, Mind you, this is just one just test. Just one test. Just one test. So and what's again. interesting though, is that when I was here looking at your reaction times in milliseconds, mm -hmm. they weren't that different. Yeah. So then it comes down to that delay between the frame being prepared and when it's drawn on the screen and registering the click too. It's, huh. cra it's crazy. I was sitting there and it was just a piece of cake. I was just like, done. Done, done. And then the other one, it, I just couldn't, I couldn't land a shot. He feels the same way right now. 30. <laughs> Two out of three. You guys got the exact That's same result? That's what I'm saying. That's a low bar. That's all I have to beat. <laughs> hey, I love it. It's way harder than that. I feel, like, I feel like I'm blindfolded, just keep the time. <laughs> this is the first time I'm actually trying out like flick, like programs or like you yeah. know, modes. I feel actually pretty good about it. Um, like I mentioned, I regret not doing this earlier because I feel like I was getting better and better. Uh, so I definitely, um, I definitely feel way better than I thought I was. So you're definitely more comfortable shooting at human targets. Yeah, like for straight sure. up. Absolutely, 100%. That was a completely different level. Yeah, it feels very different. 19.16 seconds. Yeah. Compared to, weren't you more in the neighborhood of 30 at 60 hertz? Yeah. I had two 19s on 30, and I had like 35 one time, and like 33. It's so much harder on the other setup. So much harder. All right, so that's another under 20. Yep. I think I can get a 15. You think so? I th I'm confident I can. This one feels so weird, though. I'm actually just like, just hoping I hit it in time. Because I feel like I have a whole second delay, as if you would have a whole second more on that one. Yeah. Yeah. You can definitely, it feels, it's weird. It feels like you actually have so much more time to react, even though it's this, in theory, it's the same amount of time, but it's, it's not. It's 12 milliseconds, yeah. worst case scenario, but then plus yeah. the actual uh, input delay as well. So in terms of the actual like refresh rate of the monitor, it's very little, but it actually is more than that. So yeah. it's crazy. very interesting. So you just put up a nine out of 10 mm -hmm. in the double doors at 144. Yep. So are you comfortable saying that 144 to 240 didn't really make a difference for you here? In this exact situation, no. Because it feels, it. I think the reason why this feels so so much the same is that it's it's kind of like a still, you're not really moving, right? You're right. just, they're looking for the cross. And the, you, you got the good frames, yeah. you got 144, very, very similar. And both you know? your frame rate and your refresh rate are exceeding the tick rate of the server. Yeah. So you literally 10 x your result in the flick shooting challenge going from 60 to 240. Did it feel that much better? Yes. I, I was hitting more shots, uh, in particular the, the, the doorway on CSGO. Like, I could barely touch it before. Like, such poor for performance, and then suddenly I'm hitting seven, like, 7 out of 10. So I, I can't accept responsibility myself. It's the technology it's the, that has given me this skill. No, it's great, the difference the frame rate and the hertz on the, the guy crossing the door. Uh -huh. It's so weird how on that, that. Okay. It's the same thing, but it's just not. It's weird. Okay. So right now I'm doing 60 hertz, but on 300 frames, uh -huh. instead of 60 hertz on like 80 frames. Yes. It's harder than the 240 hertz, but it's 
not quite as hard as the 60-60, you know what I mean? But it definitely is easier, for sure. There's not as much, I guess, input lag is what yeah, I'd, like, I'd explain. I'd call it like jello. Yeah, or like, you it's know. weird. It, does, it doesn't float as much like, as, yeah. yeah. Floaty. Floaty. That's, a, that's no. a really good word for it. So that seven. result is exactly like you described the feel, right in yeah. between a natural yep. 60 FPS and 240, 240. Mm -hmm. So I, ha I think I had misunderstood this test. I have to play against Shroud? Just for the first one. You say that like it makes it a lot better. <laughs> so test number five is gonna be a good one, and we've just got Shroud dialing in his mouse DPI and in-game sensitivity settings until he's at the point where he feels like, yeah, this is pretty good, I'm ready to go. Now, he does usually use a G Pro wireless instead of a G Pro with a wire, so that might introduce a little bit of variability, but at least it's the same basic sensor, so. Yep. Hopefully it's all right. So test number five is the shooting gallery test. Obviously, everything we've seen so far is still synthetic in the sense that you're playing against bots. Now it's time to see if those skills translate into the real world and take on a human opponent. I sure wish I could have picked my opponent here, but I don't get to. I did pick him, but like not because I thought it would give me a chance to win. <laughs> hey, you could beat me here. Yeah, I don't think so. So the way this test works is both competitors are going to be at the far end of a long hallway, and Seth from NVIDIA is going to be crouched behind a half-height wall and just popping up at random human intervals. Whoever kills him first gets a point. We played a best of five, then we get to switch computers. So you're on the struggle bus computer. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Is that what the pros do? They just switch, switch their weapons real fast? Yeah, hey, you gotta get the jitters. Gotta get the jitters out. The land jitters. <laughs> what, man? We're competing. I would wish you luck, but you don't need it. Yeah, uh, Yeah, we're, we're ready, I guess. Wait, oh, what the hell? I was still talking. Wait a minute, when he's a silhouette, is he hittable? No. Oh. Yeah, he's got spawn protection. Damn it! Oh. Come on. We both whiffed. Yeah! <laughs> okay, well, that's five nothing. <laughs> How do you like that machine? <laughs> this is rough. It's okay, I'll be, I'll be fine. I still don't think I'm gonna win. He was so fast. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, let's try this. Oh, there you go. Crap. Oh, I got one. Damn. Oh, nice shot. I'm slow. Oh, no. Crap. You're faster than me. Fact. I overshot. Oh, no. Yes. No. Come on. Oh, I'm reloading. <laughs> okay, wait, that's wait, fine, for, I wait for him to reload. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Oh no. Unreal. Come on, baby. No. Oh, come on! That's what I'm saying. There we go. That was hard. That was actually noticeably harder. I still lost. <laughs> now what? You guys are going head to head. Oh. oh nice. To see who can headshot me first. I didn't even shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. There's one. <laughs> nice. That was quick. Oh. Oh, nice. <laughs> we kind of suck at the off, to be honest. <laughs> oh, boy. There's one. Damn. There's one. Is 
So that's it. 5-2 for Corey, but now they have to change places. I don't think I've played Counter-Strike in like an absurd amount of time. It's crazy. I mean, this whole thing's hard because monitor, fresh rate, oh, yeah. frames, everything is... That's what Ooh. we're trying to do to you. It's, it's rough. You guys ready? Yep. yep. All right. <clears throat> okay, he's just better. <laughs> that was quick. Oh, tie game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, nice. Right in the center. Jeez. We'll get him eventually. Yeah, not gonna lie. I suck at this. It's 2-2. Two, two. Ready. Ready. Nice. Still tied. Oh, what a shot. Oh, oh my oh. God, we're terrible. Yeah, actually. Oh boy, you're embarrassing us. Nice. So no pressure or anything, boys, but next one wins. Oh. I'm gonna be as tricksy as I can. Oh, yes. shoot! That's it! <laughs> Did you feel like 240 hertz made a difference in that challenge? Definitely does, for sure. Yeah. Especially in like the middle one, where you peek up and you go down. I think that matters the most. Do you feel four hours smarter? Nope. No. <laughs> Did you already know everything that we saw today? I, so I want to say everything because I'm still under the impression that somebody on 60 hertz can be just as good as somebody on 240, but mm -hmm. now I'm starting to think that it might vary based on games. I didn't expect my reaction time to be so bad because in reality, my reaction speed might look good compared to, I don't know, maybe like a casual player or something. Yeah. But in comparison to these pros and I've seen their reaction time, they're doing like 1.4 easy on average. And I'm at like, what, 1.67 or something? When you're scanning around a map, do you think having a higher refresh rate monitor helps you identify a target more quickly? That's where I'd say it helps you the most. Because when you're moving, the faster you move, the harder it is to see on 60 hertz. If right. you're, I mean, the reaction time is kind of a, a good way to uh, put it, I guess. Because yeah. like when you're looking at a still image, nothing's going to change. But once everything's moving around, it's going to get a lot harder. So yeah, absolutely. Do you think that compared to the gear you use, your game sense and training your mind is more important, less important, or equally important? I would say it's way more important. That's like what you need to be a top tier gamer. Hardware and, and peripherals and stuff, of course, does matter, but you gotta be good at the game, you know? 144 and 248 does have a difference, but the difference is not like huge, I would say. So you were the 60 hertz king today. Hmm. Not only did you nail more double door shots than Shroud and Corey combined, I think, um, you also scored equally on your bomb site defense between 60 and 144. I don't know. Like, I mean, like I mentioned before, like 60 hertz was, you know, pretty much like my main thing for a while. And then finally moving on, it like when I switched to 60 hertz, um, it all kind of felt familiar with like the delays and, you know, button timing and all that stuff. So I was kind of able to just pick it up right away. So, um, and with 144 hertz, I mean, pretty much that was like my main thing back at home. So it, it, for me, it wasn't really too tough to transition going back into the past and then kind of back into the present. Corey and Shroud had a lot of mitigation strategies mm -hmm. to compensate, particularly between 144 and 240. Their results were usually very close. Do you think that the lack of those strategies made it so that the hardware affected your ability to perform better? I would say definitely. Um, just looking at, at the scaling of, of my testing, and I wasn't, I wasn't trying to do anything like that. I was trying to be very straightforward from test to test. Um, so I, I wasn't trying to f figure out the AI too much or anything like that. But I, I, so I think that maybe goes to show that the hardware is going to have more of an impact on a casual gamer versus somebody who's professional, where 
those little, those little gains you get from the hardware are gonna have less of an effect because they're already playing at such a high level. One really interesting takeaway, based on Shroud's much better performance at 60 hertz with the RTX 2060 Super versus that aging 750, was that even if you're still running a 60 hertz monitor, there is something to be gained from a graphics card upgrade and running at much higher FPS because there's just so much less delay even on your inputs. Okay, so it's been about a week and we've had some time to dig into our data and our high speed footage and see if using a high refresh rate monitor and a powerful graphics card like a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti can make you a better gamer. It's worth going through test by test here. While raw reaction times in our synthetic test were similar across refresh rates, when it came to reacting to moving objects and timing in our double doors test, hit rates were way lower at 60 FPS, 60 Hertz than at our higher refresh rates, with most of our shots actually being just a few milliseconds off. We also have a couple of shots here where they look like they could have been hits, but ended up missing because at 60 frames per second, the target's location doesn't update as often, which meant that what our camera, and therefore your eyes, was seeing was already out of date by the time the shot landed. Mr. Grimm showed us that with enough practice, you can actually overcome some of this disadvantage. His experience with beat and rhythm games allowed him to quickly familiarize himself with the speed of the cue, so that's the appearance of the opponent, and then predict when they would cross his crosshair. But everyone, including Grimm's, performed better with frame rates over 60 FPS, showing that with more information to predict trajectory and speed, everyone will perform better. We actually had Shroud repeat this test at 60 Hertz on his monitor, but with a frame rate well above 200. And the result was much better because the input lag and overall latency is reduced, but he still didn't land as many hits as when he had both high FPS and a high refresh rate display. In the Overwatch flick test at 60 frames and 60 Hertz, we definitely saw differences in aim movement. It was slower and with more corrective movement after the initial flick, Furthermore, shots would often be taken a few milliseconds after the target disappeared. The ghosting effect, which occurs regardless of refresh rate, is also greater at 60 Hertz, and the displacement of the image between refreshes is larger, making everything look blurrier at speed, which necessitates slowing down. On to our bombsite defense or flow state test. At 60 frames and Hertz, movement is slower because the position of in-game aim is less clear, the timing of the shots and movement prediction and tracking is worse, and aim movement between targets ends up being slower and less accurate because the subject has to readjust. Unsurprisingly, Shroud's runs in the bombsite defense flow state test were the fastest, though not actually the most consistent. What was surprising was that his fastest runs were at 144 frames and hertz. This appears to have been due to the training effect where he had started to recognize patterns in the test by the time he got to the 144 hertz station. With Mr. Grimms and Paul, neither of whom have played much CSGO, we actually found that the less familiar you are with the activity, the more the results line up with our expectations. So their runs were both faster and more consistent as the refresh rate and frame rate increased. We also found that I ended up being a great example of the training effect as well. I did my 144 frame and Hertz test first, then I did 60, then 240, and my run times ended up improving as I went. So overall, 60 FPS at 60 Hertz clearly had the worst results in every test. While some individual runs did have better scores, the consistency between runs was usually much better at 240 Hertz, and the most predictable improvements were actually found in the more casual players who didn't have as much game sense and muscle memory to rely on. So aim in game then could be described as a function of muscle memory, response, prediction, and confirmation. When a target appears, you begin to aim towards it based on your existing knowledge of where your mouse is and where it needs to be. As you're moving, you receive a visual and correct or continue your movement until you've reached your target. When your target moves, you predict where the target will be and when based on a combination of pre-existing knowledge of speed and your brain calculating the speed and trajectory based on what you see on the monitor. So with lower frame and refresh rates, the following disadvantages are present. 
you've got less up-to-date target information due to frames being displayed for longer, your movement is blurrier thanks to the transition of frames between refreshes, and you've got a worse speed and trajectory estimation due to that lack of information. These effects can be overcome to a great degree with training, but there's gonna be a limit to the situations where that training can be applied. So I wasn't surprised to find out that 60 FPS gamers are at a significant disadvantage compared to high refresh rate gamers. But I was surprised at how big the difference was between 144 and 240. So then, all other things being equal, will high FPS and a high refresh rate monitor make you a great gamer? No. But will it make you a better gamer? Undoubtedly. So using a powerful graphics card like an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, thanks again to our sponsor for making this whole video happen, to see things sooner and to have a better chance of hitting what you're aiming at does help. And I can't wait to see how this translates to 300 FPS, 300 Hertz and beyond. Is that a teaser for a part three? I will let you be the judge.